This is a 360 video presentation. It's best viewed on a tablet or on a phone, can be also viewed on a PC. Hold your finger down on the tablet or phone or hold your mouse button down and move the screen around and it will rotate. Um, if you don't want to watch this 360 edition, there is a normal edition which uh, is just filmed with a normal camera. That is in the link's description below. So uh, the link for it will be below. Um, but otherwise, enjoy this 360. Okay then folks, let's go. See you in a minute. Cheers. Cheers. Um, yeah, Look at this. Right, we are we are going down. So this is the uh, oh, this is the scary scary shaft. A couple of light switches yeah. and that. This is it folks. This is it. Portland Road to Bunker, here we come. Look at that. Isn't that something? It's a bit moist at the bottom. Just use my normal email address. No, no, Sue, that's you. At portlandmail.com. halfway now and there's Sue up there and she's got my bag is on a, uh, a bit of rope and here's all the wires like on the wall so that's wearing let's get down anyway GPS signal is lost apparently. Here you go, folks. Right, so we're standing on a breeze block. It gets a bit damp. Oh my god, look at this, folks. Look at this. Yeah, or let's go back to following Monday. Wow. Let's get my bag then. And there's my bag. I will just climb down from here, and we are in this bunker which is the Portland rotor bunker and around the walls you can see where the, uh, the stairs would have been so that would have been all around the side going up and in the centre going around the stairs was the lift shaft so the stairs went all the way around the edge with the lift shaft in the middle but guess what folks this is where the fun starts. Look at that. It's got all these cable cable tracks. Look at that. That is something. And then it comes down into all this cable ducting. And this is actually the way in down the hill. Now that that is something. That there folks is definitely something. So let's go and have a look. We have exclusive access. We can spend as much time as we want. We're going to make sure we get as much of this documented as we can. And I've got my 3D camera, 360 camera. 
my A7S. So I don't think anyone else has got it like this, because I think most people's most people's videos, like the television company, is a bit more like that. So yeah, we don't like that. We like this. We like to see things properly. So oh, I forgot. I've got to turn my extra torch on the back of my head on so we get a view to the back. So we've got front torches and we've got back torches. So the 360 is covered. We don't want you to miss anything here. Yeah? Wow, this is a big tunnel. This is very big. This has got the concrete lagging, which is like the stuff that you fireproof with. You can see it's broken away. Oh, you are kidding me. <laughs> oh, really? Guess what, folks? My batteries run out of my gimbal. Sorry, right, I've got new ones, but we've got to go back up and we've got to start again. Amazing. God, I must have been using this gimbal a lot then for that to, that to run out like that. So here we go, folks. I'm going to have to climb back up to the surface to get some batteries. Let's see. Right, we're back on again, folks. Now we've got some recharged batteries in my gimbal. Let's give this another go. Alright, so here we are underground, and this place just looks amazing. This is definitely something else. junction box or something on the right hand side. It's a fuse box perhaps for emergency lighting or something. Let's have a quick look. Yeah. Fuse box. Slightly more modern. Uh, but they've definitely uh, definitely gone. Not very good. A bit of moisture on the uh, thing. You can see drippers. Drippers there. Here we go. Starting to get a little bit more moist on the floor. We've got slightly more modern emergency lighting. And some of the original cables are still here. Some of the cable ducting here. And there's the view back up from where we just came. Amazing, it's very still down here, there's no noise. Here we go, power room, first thing we're coming to. So we've got those shutters, which we've seen in many rotor bunkers, it's all the same. This one's got its transformer lock. The transformer has not been stolen, as it is in so many other places. So we've got uh, power in, and then power to the transformer. There's the, uh, the shutter doors, and all of that is before you get into the bunker itself. So you keep the transformer out here. Uh, you can see it looks like a stepping, it's a stepping up of these concrete pillars. It gets higher. Can you see where it steps up? Big old blast doors, which have still got their, their sealer, sealers on them. Look at that. Still got this, the rubber seals, amazing. So, Rob 2010, look, somebody was in here in 2010. So, uh, yeah. Dave Hope, decommissioned January 2000 by DLP Limited and Hayden's. Again, we've got quite a few 
but it's got a higher ceiling here. It's, uh, it's gone up in height from the way we walked in. Whoa. There we go, folks. So it's a long corridor. A bit of fire, fire pipe here, which probably would have gone to a uh, round hose, fire hose. I was warned to watch the floors because you can go through, I was told. Wow. So this is the uh, command room, which is like we saw in Beachy Head. Same sort of stuff on the walls. I would say slightly better condition as well. And more of these iron girders. I think the girders were taken out in Beachy Head. Uh, you should have a good good view of that now. So yeah. There we go. And across this side we've got uh, power power ducting and probably this was to do with um, sending the signals, signals through, so that's signal ducting I expect. We've got venting on the corners, the corners of each room, those yellow or creamy coloured, creamy coloured vents. And on the floor we can see evidence of the, um, the tube vents, some of which seem to have been sealed up, 50% of them have been sealed up. So they've got little uh, blanking plates on them. Yep. So there's been some uh, work done to, to put things to stop people trying to go into these rooms. Not that there's much in there that you'd want to see, but uh, yeah. Oh look, we've got an original fan control unit look. And it says main fan, high speed, normal fresh air, apparatus cooling, gas fan mm. for this room and you've got the the bulb that goes in there is the bulb that's the starter it's the starter bulb for the fluorescent tubes because they used to use a bulb as a starter um, back in the day I don't know, have I got my light behind me on? As bright as it could be, I'm just going to check it. Oh yes, it is on bright apparently. Let's see if it's... It should be... Visible? Yeah, okay. Just checking out for the 360. So more of the original, original rooms, and it's just a bit damp on the floor down there. So and we've got a small area which might be the toilets. I was going to say it's probably the toilets. It's practically the same design as Beachy Head. Even the urinal is in the same place, which is pretty amazing, isn't it? The urinal is in the same same spot. And uh, so there we are. And we have a non-destroyed toilet. It has not been destroyed, yes. Nice to see things in a kind of working state. Oh. Did I bang my 360 or did I not? There's the ladies toilets going in. I don't know if this is a if it had a fire damage or something because it's it's sooted. It's sooted in here. Now whether that soot is had some fire damage or whether it's just good old 
long time dirt is unknown. So there's the female toilets. But I get the feeling, I get the feeling that there's a possibility they may have had, may have had something, maybe a light fire down here. Hmm. Hard to, hard to know, but if they've had a fire, I wouldn't understand how it would, how it had not taken out some of these bits of wood. Well, that's an interesting room, isn't it? That's the gallery. That's a gallery looking down from up there. That's a wooden gallery. I don't know whether we'll be able to get to that. Look, there's, um, there's, there's, uh, on the top of this, have a look up, folks. Have a look, there's a gantry. I don't know if that's meant to be used. You can walk on top. I have no idea. That's interesting. I've not seen that like that before. So head down, coming into these rooms. Make sure we don't um, hit the camera. I'm going to bring the camera down a bit. It's a little bit. It's a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's. I don't even know if it's recording. Actually, folks, let me just um, let me just investigate. It is. It doesn't make any noise, so it's hard to know. So, uh, oh god! Very hard to operate with one hand. So you've got this room here. Oh, serving hatch! Wow! That serving hatch. That's something. Something. You don't see very often. So again, there's a lot of sort of dark, tarry type slime. Slime, it's like tar. But um, no, there's no smoke per se up on the ceiling. So I don't know whether it's some sort of black mold or something. And it's very still down here. There's no, there's no real particulates in it. It's quite. But again, you know, black slime and female, female toilets. Hmm. And small vents. Now that vent there would have been an exhaust vent for the uh, incinerator. There would have been an incinerator there, I think, for the uh, female hygiene um, burning of feminine hygiene products. Mm. So, it's a lot of funk and weird stuff on that uh, that door there. So let's get around the corner and have a look. Light switches. I don't think that's something we've seen in the others, and they. Still serviceable, and we've also got a, uh, a spinner for a vent here to open and close the vents. It still works. It still works as well. To open and close the vents now. This I I don't know what this is. This looks like a uh, serving hatch for food or. Bits and pieces. Now have a look at this. This is something we don't see very often. Have a look at that. Look, those are uh, like power sockets, but there's a light on them as well, which tells you something. Maybe it tells you whether the power's turned on or off or whatever. Look at this. Look at this mess, though. Makes you think. That's that's soot. It's like soot. Maybe there was some sort of limited limited fire in here. We will have to ask. And across here, we have some more rooms. Yeah, oh, wow. So they've actually got, they've actually got some of the old equipment in here. It's an asbestos hazard, but as we know with asbestos, it's 
probably in this wall bit here look it's actually on that wall bit so here in this room as long as we don't touch anything we should be okay but look at all this equipment folks vintage look it's still got the bands on the motors the motors are i think those are pumps green pumps behind so those are the pumps so this would have been air conditioning equipment really to keep the place cool because there would be so much electricity in here it would be hot and really all you all you're trying to do in these bunkers is keep things cool you're not really worried about heat heat is the last of the things you need in a place like this it's all about keeping it cool so these have been air conditioning pumps probably so there we are it says main air fan canteen extractor canteen extractor plant room fan plant room apparatus so don't know what this is this could be a, a chilling humidifier or something like that and it's saying warning this this object contains asbestos so definitely not to be touched then and we've got the filters yeah and up there there's green pipes it says apparatus cooler so that's cooling and the, the filter room and all the filters replacement filters here hmm so then I think this is probably the chiller chiller unit which would probably spray water into this chamber and then run it would also then run um, run a lot of air through it so we would be spraying water whilst running air and that's an air, air filter unit air filter unit so right up to the back and you can see the see the pipes going in there and the pipes would have been to spray the water the water served, I think it should serve two purposes because by spraying water in and letting the water run down whilst passing the water, passing air through it, it would take out any dust particles in the air because they'd become attached to the water and it would also provide uh, the cooling. So there we go. You can see the big old water pipes here going in and uh, big pumps pumps going along there and the pumps were made by bull bull company so there we are and there's your uh, power switches on the wall over there should we have a look inside this is made, made by the Watford company wow look at that these are actually um, rheostats these are rheostats which um, turn and give you different amounts of voltage so it can be varied so you can turn it up or down and this is a motor here you see this see this mechanism here this is a motor which drives this which goes right the way through here and as it does it basically then turns and these um, brushes make contact and depending on which way it turns it's like a massive variable light switch you know like you get in your room when you turn a light up and down it's like that you turn it except instead of being a little turny switch the turny switch is actually going through three of these massive coils and that's your turner and that turns the coils but it's probably all completely seized up now yes it is and there's one there one there and possibly one below as well yeah, there's one down there. So this is about varying the power. This is all about varying the power. Okay, so you can turn it from high power, medium, low, off. So you want to be able to, uh, you know, vary the speed of the fans. And uh, here's contactors over here. These are contact switches. So these would switch into place like that. Can you see? Let's just make sure you can see. So 
with a little bit of electric um, energy, it would energize a coil which was magnetic and the magnetic coil would bang, pull the contactors. So they could be switched on and off. With a small amount of power, you control a huge amount of power because these are for handling massive power, but you only have to put a small amount of power in to get it to rock back and forth. So those are rocker contacts. And um, I'm wondering where the control mechanism is for the turning it, turning it up or turning it down. You know, where does it get turned, turned up or turned down? You know, the speed. So is it is it turned up or down automatically? Or is it turned up and down by somebody actually controlling it? Interesting, huh? Interesting stuff. And up here, you've got the, the heat rheostats. So those are resistor packs up there. And those resistor packs inside, they burn off the heat. So they burn off the excess heat that alters the voltage. So um, you basically trade off the voltage, turn it back into heat, and you can lower the voltage that way. So you've got current control and you've got um, voltage control. So again, we've got pumps here. And this is, this is made by Teddington, Teddington Company it's called. And it says it's a modulating unit. So that's interesting, isn't it? Um, we've got the pumps. And lots of, you know, big, big old pumps there, which you've got a gear gear reduction system so a lot of turns on the right hand pulley mean a lot a smaller amount of turning but with a lot more pressure a lot more you know torque so this one spins very quickly and it turns that power into a slow turn here and that slow turning high torque power is to operate these pumps and those pumps would be I don't know what they would be for for water probably probably water um, but I'm assuming it's it's part of a pressurization system uh, for cooling but not in the way that we do it these days where they use Freon and it's like a refrigerator this would have probably just been for pumping water to spray water through the air cooling system where it, it humidified took the dust out of the air and all the rest of it but I don't know because I don't think they were using refrigerants in the same way. Tell us in the comments if you know I'm wrong and I probably am wrong. Now up here you've got some interesting uh, things. These probably light up but they're fuses at the same time. They're probably fuses um, but there's little capsules in each one of these and I imagine as long as you see the light is on in each one of those you know you're in business. Now there's pipes going into the underneath. Can you see the pipes going up and in? So I imagine that they're probably feeding a pressure signal. So they're telling you what the pressure is and whether your pumps are working hard enough. And if the pressure is right, um, your light may not come on perhaps. And if your light comes on, there's a problem. Or what would be safer, because you just don't know if the bulb is broken. Imagine if the bulb is broken, the light will never come on. So you'll never know something is unsafe. So I imagine they probably do it in reverse. Okay, so what they probably do is they keep the light on if things are safe. And if the light goes out for any reason, either the bulb is blown or it's unsafe. So the pressures are unsafe. So I would imagine they work it in reverse. Because that way they're not going to make a mistake. Now this thing down here... As we can see, it actually says on it, it's a Teddington thermostat. So that's the thermostat. And these are the little uh, temperature pipes going into the thermostat. And this thing here is a control where you can turn. Ah, look, it's, it moves up and down, look. Can you see that? Hang on. Can you see in there, as I spin that, as I spin that, it goes 50, 40. So you can set the temperature that you want the, the, the switches to come on or off. And that, those probably go into those big relay cabinets. So when the temperature comes up enough, it'll switch the relay cabinet on or off to supply more or less heat. So this thing here is telling what the heat is inside this big chamber. 
then that passes that along to the relay cabinet which turns the big fans on or off and that's how they control the heat and here's another one here's another temperature controller look but this one doesn't have the window in it but it has the little set unit so you can set it but it doesn't have the window so you can see what the temperature is set to that's another thermometer right what else have we got in here pressure gauges valves yeah and in this in this lining here this lining this cladding that's where the asbestos is so you you don't want to go messing with that lining basically that would be very naughty hmm but there you are asbestos if left alone and not kicked up into the air is not too bad so again asbestos hazard in here they used to use a lot of asbestos in electrical switches and electrical contacts so again they they're saying caution but i think we know i think we know what we're doing so we'll go and have a quick look i know what not to touch so we've got the sump pump pillar drill main switching workshop red grindstone switch fusing workshop yellow spare blue spare compressor in sump room and a spare so yes inside these oh so uh yeah i don't know if my uh head my 360 has gone off so let's have a look let's have a little look has the 360 gone off as it does as it does So here we've got um, we've got these switch switch connectors. Now I I won't do it because by switching them you're probably going to release the asbestos. So I'm not going to actually attempt to operate any of those switches. Oh, this is interesting. You've got your amp meter amp meter and voltmeter and these controls here allow you to select whether you're looking at the red phase the yellow phase or the blue phase which are the three phases of power that come in because this would be a 400 volt system probably and you have red phase green phase blue phase for industrial equipment so you can you can check on the meters so if you want to use these voltmeters down here and you want to know what's what's going on on the red phase you change it to red 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 and you know you've got your ammeter and uh yeah but this is the outside supply so this tells you what you're drawing in from the outside world on the outside supply and this one at the bottom tells you what you're doing on the standby supply yeah so and then you've got pipes and bits and pieces there but yeah this is inside it's inside your fuse room oh here we are lighting in men's restroom it says let's have a look at this lighting in men's restroom women's restroom canteen women's toilets lighting in men's toilets and stores three lighting in switch room four fluorescent lighting in rooms three and four four fluorescent lighting in rooms three and four wall brackets in room three Five is lighting on emergency exits and stairways. Uh, six is a 50 volt charger. And 50 volts, I think, was used by the military. Military used to use 50 volts in mobile vehicles and things like that. So that's probably what the 50 volt is. Um, and you've got twin fluorescent fittings, fluorescent fittings, spares, lighting in the rear of plant room. This one is 15 amp switching for incinerator. So that's the incinerator in the uh, women's toilet. There we are. Pilot switch unit in canteen. Pilot switch unit in canteen. So I wonder if that's what that little, that little light was, the pilot switch. That's why they had that red light on, those little red crystal lights. And I said, I wonder what those are. They're probably pilot switches 
in the canteen. So there's two of them and there's two fuses on this box look. So um, there's a switch plug in the women's restroom, switch plug in the men's restroom, switch plug in room three, switch plug in room four, switch plug in stores. And written down on here is we have five amp switch, pl switch plug in room five, uh, switch plug in the corridor, pump room, filtration room and cooler room. Then we have switch plug in the switch room, switch plug on the balcony. Aha, uh -huh, balcony. You see, I said there was a balcony in here. Five amp switch plugs in transformer room and corridor and 50 volt unit in plant room. Five amp switch plug in center corridor. Float switch for klaxon. So there we are. Number eight, float switch for klaxon. So a float switch means if it's flooding down here, if there's water levels getting up, a klaxon will sound so people know that they have to get that water out. Okay, and nine is the emergency exit alarm. So there we go. All right, so now you've, had, you've, you've been told all the wiring in here. I expect you to be able to do a full report when we, when we get out of here later. I expect a full report on my desk. Whoa, what's just happened to my, uh... oh no, my gimbal. What, the batteries on, the, on, on this have gone as well? Oh, you're kidding me. Well, if that's the case, oh my God, look at this switching equipment. Amazing. If the batteries have gone on this one, I'm going to have to go and switch to my, using my um, DJI Pocket, which will be a bit of a shame because you don't get it quite as good as this. So let's um, open up the uh, iris a bit for you. Make it nice and clean. Oh, it's just gone off. It's just gone off. Shit. So... That's that's not a good sign then, folks. Um, I need to go back and get some batteries. So we will continue this in a minute. And let's just have a look around the corner on the 360. Wow, so that's the doorway out. So we need to go and get uh, more batteries or we're gonna be in trouble. So let's go back and let's get some, some batteries in then, folks. I cannot believe that my gimbal has given out. It normally goes for hours and hours and hours. So I've been a bit silly on the old uh, on the old uh, power supply situation here, folks. Let's let's shut this off. Right. <laughs> Moose. Somebody's done a picture sitting moose up here, look. Moose, interesting. So, I'll go all the way back up now, and possibly even climb up the ladder to the surface to go and get a few more batteries out of my second battery pack I've got. So I'm really grinding through some batteries here, folks. Cannot believe this. So I think that's, oh, actually, oh, shit, I think I put the wrong batteries back in. 
I think I put the same batteries back in. That's not good. That is not clever. But that is a, a very me thing to do, that is. Wow, I think I put the same batteries back in, folks. Unbelievable. That is, that is very me. Oh yeah, yeah, look, look, I put the same battery back in again. Wow. Matt, what are you like? What am I like? Bloody hell. Tell you what. Well, at least I don't have to climb back up to the surface, which is something. <clears throat> now the battery meter on this now should go all the way to the top. No, it's gone down to two bars. So I don't quite know what's going on here, folks, but if it if it can survive walking around no it's gone down to one what is going on with these batteries folks what the hell is going on i'm confused now i'm very confused how i'm burning through these batteries that is very strange mm. so i'm going to assume that's good let's take no Let's take, no, let's take these, let's see if these are any good. No. Well, I am confused. You know what? I'm gonna. I'm just gonna climb up the ladder and go and get some some fresh batteries. This is pretty silly. So uh, we'll see you in a minute, folks. I'm gonna take the old uh, 360 off, or shall I? Shall I just go up with the 360 on? Yeah, whatever. Let's go up with the 360 on. Sod it. Let's just do it. Right, so you get to climb up as well now, folks. So, wow, there 
there we go. Because we believe in giving you the maximum, maximum viewing pleasure. To the other end now because we've already done most of this so we're basically going straight down to see what's at the far end we're going to try and work out where that goes so we come i'm just going to pick picture my head we come down the thing we come down this shaft okay and now we're going, I think we're going across the field. Yeah, I can kind of try to picture it in my mind which way it goes. So, all the way down. We might go for a little walk over here in a bit. We shall see what the viability of that is, whether it's safe enough. It's not too much water underneath. Have to see whether we can walk across these I beams safely, and we want to get up here into this uh, into this viewing gantry platform. Should be kind of fun. In other words, up behind that wall. Now that might be a bit of a dangerous thing because the wood might be rotted out. So for some reason, somebody's left a ladder here. Now that would give a clue to something, I'm sure. What would that mean? Here we are, other end. So we're gonna have a, a walkway to the surface, probably. Ooh, fans, fan units. So this is the air section, which kept sealed off because this is where the air intakes come in and out. Mm. So there's holes down in the floor where the pipes are. Some of the concrete's been eaten away in some of these bits. Ah, ladders, ladders. More air vent stuff and filter boxes. Mm. And sump pump. That's a sump pump, I think, or a compressor. That could be a compressor. But I also think it's probably, looks like a sump, that over the edge, doesn't it? Looks like there's a sump of some description. Yeah, it's a sump. Oh, something just dropped in there. Funny that. Timed well, that was. So here's another way potentially in and out and look this would have been a steps as well you can see on the wall so this would have been a steps but this would have been a, a spiral escape steps so what do we do here then folks are we going to give it are we going to give it some with this camera oh my god i don't think this is the best camera for doing this sort of climbing um but we will suffer and try Nonetheless, even though it's not the best camera for this sort of climbing, we will give it a go. Mm -mm. We want to see where there's a long... Ooh, hang on. We want to see if there's a long walkway in and out of this place. So here we go, folks. Uh, yeah. So you can see down there, you can see down the corridor. And the way we came back in and out. There he is. Hopefully this ladder is good enough to do the job. Oh, 
Oh. There's a little bit of rust on some of the uh, on some of the supports for this ladder, so it doesn't look doesn't look brilliant. But oh yeah, oh shit, that's probably why you need ladder too. <laughs> oh dear, yeah. So this is not going to go very far, there, folks. We're not going to go very far on this. Right. So this would have been an emergency, emergency escape. Oh Jesus! Oh my God! <coughs> oh my God! We ne we never be getting up there. Wow. Oh shit. So yeah, there was an escape shaft then folks. And uh, we are definitely not gonna be getting up there. Whew. Yeah. Not really, I don't think so. So here we go off the edge, down where we just came from, and this camera is not exactly the right camera for the job for this, but we will, we will try. We will try because we've got no other choice at this point, because we have to get down. Now, I dare say, they're not gonna be too enamored with people doing what I've just done here. So, I think this ladder will probably be taken away after, after this to stop people doing what I've just done. So, oh shit. Nice. Did not sound good, folks. That did not sound good on this ladder. Didn't like the sound of that. See what I mean? It's like, see what I mean? A little bit rusted, you know, and those are the things that are actually holding the ladder up. So, not good. Not good. So there we are, right. So what else have we got down here then, folks? Let's have a quick look before we decide to head back. And I'm gonna do some close-up work with the DJI Pocket just to give you some extra details because it does better focusing. That looks like a thermometer or a pressure gauge. And, oops, sorry, I beg, beg my pardon. That on the wall there is a pressure gauge and that probably regulates whether the the fan turns on or off depending on pressure so there we are ready out and uh, big old fan blades there and yeah and the old, uh, yeah, the the bits are still in there, the, the rubber bands, but they've kind of looked like they've turned to stone. So, hmm. All right, so let's get back up then. Let's have a little look at these doors from the other side. folks you have seen nearly all of it I will go in there with the the DJI pocket camera in a bit but let's head back up get the DJI pocket camera and come back down yep right then I'm gonna 
I'm going to pack this shit up for a minute.